Welcome back folks, we're going to take a look today at the strengths of acids and bases. Last time we learned a little bit about how we define acids and bases and conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Well today we're actually going to do some math associated with acids and bases. How do we know how strong certain acids are? How do we know how strong certain bases are? And how do they interact with each other? Those are just a few of the topics that we're going to look at today through today's lesson. So your goals and objectives, you're going to be able to relate the strength of an acid or base to its degree of ionization. So when we took, take the acid base and put it in water, what happens to it? And how does that relate to how strong an acid or base is? Additionally, you should be able to explain, relate, and calculate the pH and pOH of various acid and base solutions. All right, so let's get going. Strong acids and bases, we use the term strong to describe several different types of acids and bases. Strong acids are acids that will ionize completely when they're placed in solution. What do I mean by ionize completely? It means that every single molecule of that acid breaks apart into its individual ions. So for example, we have one mole of HCl to start with and we place that HCl into water. It completely breaks apart into one mole of H plus and one mole of Cl minus. There's no HCl left over. All right, And this happens with six different acids. HCl, hydrochloric acid. H2SO4, sulfuric acid. HBr, hydrobromic acid. HI, hydriotic acid. HNO3, nitric acid. And H3PO4, phosphoric acid. Additionally, bases that ionize completely are called strong bases. They do the exact same thing. If I have one mole of NaOH, and it's a strong base, it's going to completely break apart into one mole of Na ions and one mole of OH ions. So strong acids and bases ionize completely. They completely break apart when you put them into solution. Now, weak acids and weak bases, which is essentially everything that's not a strong acid or base, only partially ionize in solution. If we start with one mole of HF, we notice that there's only 0 0.04 moles of H plus and 0 0.04 moles of F minus. There's still 0.96 moles of HF left over. That tells us that only 0 0.04 moles of the HF actually ionized. Only 0.04% actually broke apart. That lowers, that's, that H plus concentration is much lower than what you would see in a strong acid because strong acids completely break apart you're going to see one mole of H plus in a strong acid where you're going to see significantly less in a weak acid. And remember, it's the H plus ion that determines how acidic a solution is. All right? Same thing with weak bases. There's going to be a significantly lower amount of OH minus ions or hydroxide ions in solution compared to that of a strong base. So in this example, there's still some HF left over and therefore the lower H plus concentration means that it is a weaker acid than compared to the strong acid. All right, so you look at the picture on the right. When you place the acid into water, all of the uh, H pluses, which are the protons, completely ionize from the acid. Whereas with the weak acid, there are still some acid ions left over. All right, not all of it has broken apart into its individual ions. And again, keep in mind that acidity is determined by the concentration of H plus and OH in solution. If there's more H than OH, it's an acid. If there's more OH than H, it's a base. One of the formulas that we need to make sure we understand is what's called KW. And KW is equal to the H plus concentration times the OH concentration. And where KW is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Water contains equal amounts of H and OH. So it's important to understand that when we go through this. So we can do some calculations. If we know the H concentration in solution, we can determine the OH concentration as well because KW is always 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So we need to determine the H plus concentration when the OH concentration of a solution of NaOH is 1.45 times 10 to the negative third. Well, we know a couple of things here. First off, we know our formulas. So let's go ahead and write those out. All right. We know that Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. All right. We also know that Kw is equal to 
H plus times our OH minus concentration. So based upon this, we know KW, we know OH, therefore we can solve for H plus. So let's plug it in. KW, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th equals our H concentration multiplied by 1.45 times 10 to the negative third. And now we just simply do a little bit of algebra and solve for our H plus. And when we solve using algebra, we get our answer to be 6.90 times 10 to the negative 12th. And again, in the unit's constant, it is a concentration, so we need to make sure to include molarity. All right? So all you need to do is plug in what the known concentration is, set it equal to KW, and just solve for the unknown. Very simple and very easy to do. Now, when we look at concentrations, sometimes the big numbers and the, the, uh, the exponents can be difficult to understand. Remember, because those exponents don't refer to the amount, they refer to the power of 10, right? So for example, 1 times 10 to the negative second is actually a greater number than 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So it can be hard to understand. So rather than just using those concentrations, we use log functions to express how acidic something is. So when we take the pH, which stands for power of hydrogen, that's equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration. POH is equal to the negative log of OH, and that's the power of hydroxide. pH plus POH is always going to equal 14. So we have th four equations we can really use here, including the KW expression from the previous slides. If the pH is greater than 7, the solution is considered a base, and if the pH is less than 7, it's considered an acid. So we can do a whole multitude of problems simply based upon this. One thing you need to make sure you understand as well is that it is a log-based function. Log-based functions are driven by the power of 10. So for example, if I have an acid that's a pH of 1 and an acid that's a pH of 2, the acid with the pH of 1 is 10 times more acidic than the pH of 2 because it's on a log-based scale. All right. Comparing something with a pH of 1 to a pH of 3, that's 100 times more acidic. All right. The solution that's the pH of 1 is 100 times more acidic than the, pH, uh, than the solution with the pH of 3. So just make sure you understand these log-based functions have a really big impact on how acidic something truly is. So when we do these calculations, sometimes you won't necessarily be given the H or OH concentration, you'll just be given the molarity of the acid or base. Well, remember that because we're dealing with strong acids and bases at this point in time, the concentration of the acid is going to be the same as the concentration of the H. So if I have one mole of HCl, I put that into solution, it becomes one mole of H plus ions. All right? So just make sure you understand that when we go in and do these types of problems. Again, remember, when we talk about strong acids and bases, and we have a reaction of HCl, it's going to completely ionize into H plus and Cl minus, right? Well, if I have one, you know, if the concentration is one molarity of this, and I place that into water, that tells me that this is going to be one molarity, all right? The H plus concentration and the acid concentration are going to be the same, because the acid completely ionizes when it's placed in solution. Makes it a lot easier to do these types of problems. So, let's do a couple of practice problems here. Determine the pH and pOH from a 1 point, I'm sorry, from a 0 0.045 molar solution of HNO3. Well, again, we know a couple of things. We know our formula, pH is equal to negative log of H plus. Right? So, and we also know that our acid concentration is the same as our H plus concentration. So, we know that this number right here is our H plus concentration. So let's plug it in and solve. pH is equal to negative log of 0 0.04. Plug that into your calculator and solve. The pH of this solution 
is 1.35. And that tells you that it is a acid, all right? Determine the pH of a 0.25 molar HCl solution. Again, this tells us our H plus concentration. So we can then plug that into the pH, negative log of H, and solve. pH here is going to be 0 0.60. Again, even stronger acid here. All right. So again, just take your time going through it step by step and make sure you read the directions. You should have no problem. All right. Let's move on. This problem is a little bit different. It's asking to determine the H plus and OH minus concentration from a solution that has a pH of 3.49. Well, we're not given H or OH, and we're only given pH. So what we need to do is actually the inverse log, okay? Because typically you go from H to, and OH to pH, that's the log function, right? If you remember, pH equals the negative log of H plus, right? Well, in order to go backwards from H plus, we need to do the inverse function of that. 10 raised to the negative pH. That will give us our H plus concentration. We also should remember that Kw equals H plus times OH minus. So we can plug, use all of these three formulas to solve for our unknowns. All right, let's solve for H concentration first. Our H plus is going to equal 10 to the negative 3.49. Solve for H plus. And you're going to get 3.24 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's molarity. OK? So we have our H plus concentration. Now we just plug it into the KW formula and solve for OH concentration. Remember that KW, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th equals your H plus, which is 3.24 times 10 to negative fourth. And that's multiplied by your OH minus concentration. All right? And then just solve for OH minus. Your OH minus here is going to be 3.09 times 10 to the negative 11th. Again, remember, that is a unit of concentration, so make sure to include molarity with that. All right? So these really aren't that difficult to solve for. You just need to make sure, again, very similar to our solutions unit, know when to use what, when. All right? And again, you can do a multitude of these. Just make sure you remember the four formulas we talked about. So hopefully today you're able to relate the strength of an acid or base to its degree of ionization. You know that there's a difference between weak acids and uh, strong acids and strong bases and weak bases. And that how that relates to its degree of ionization. And then calculate um, a multitude of pH, pOH type of problems, all right? So again, if you have any questions, let me know. We'll go through this and we'll continue to work on through our acids and bases unit. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you later.